What's going on, King Nation? It's Dean here. I want to talk to you about 2024 planning. We're in that phase right now. Maybe we should have planned 2023. I don't know. But now that we have all the books from last year, we can actually see what we did, which is missing our goals horribly and losing money, which stinks. But that all aside, we have a plan to make it better. Let me tell you about it. So first thing that's really important for us is going to be making a budget this year, um, especially as far as overhead goes. Uh, we really had a very, very loose budget last year, and we actually based it off of a revenue projection we didn't hit, which is really hard because if you're planning to do a million dollars in revenue and you don't hit that, well, then you spent like you were going to hit a million dollars, problem. So to avoid that, what we're doing this year is we're making a very, very conservative budget for all of our overhead. And so this way, if we add revenue, we've made more profit. That's all. As long as we've kept our overhead the same. Um, so that'd be really, really cool. And then as far as the um, as far as the cost of goods goes, right, our cost of goods is way higher than it should have been. We're shooting for a way lower number this year. Um, and if we hit that number, like I said, do more in revenue and our overhead stays the same, that's all profit. So the, the number one thing for me is making sure we keep our cost of goods where it needs to be because that's a, the biggest driver lever-wise in our whole business just because we're doing work outside with our hands or where our team is. And so we need to make sure that that cost of goods is on point because if that cost of goods is on point, and, and when I used to say that, I mean, you know, the cost of materials, obviously, but then the cost of labor on the jobs as well. And that's, you know, the big one that eats us up. We don't really have a lot of subcontractors, but if we did, that'd be in there too. But the big thing for us is making sure our cost of labor is on point. And so we have a new P4P system that should be really awesome this year. Um, and it's, it's the same as last year system-wise, but we have a new Excel sheet that the team's going to be able to see their P4P every single day. We're going to be having a virtual assistant that's somewhere in the world. Uh, be calculating that every night so that way every day the team can see exactly what they did and exactly where they were so they can compare which is going to be really helpful so that way everybody stays motivated um, we're going to do something really cool for our team member pay that's a surprise for the team so I can't say it on here but uh, that'll be really neat um, and then really just going to be making sure I watch that like a hawk making sure we're our fertilization team's being efficient is routed efficiently the landscape team same thing we're doing a lot of hourly work for landscaping we're going to do almost no work that's pre-did it will all be hourly and so, you know, if we sell the hours we need to sell, uh, which for us is going to be about one crew of three people all year long, maybe we'll do more than that. That'd be awesome. But at the very least, we hit the number, we'll be crushing it. Um, and on the mowing side, we want to keep three trucks busy. Uh, we're going to grow our mowing side a little bit this year and then really probably like quadruple our fertilization weed control side. But it's not that impressive when it wasn't that big to begin with. So quadrupling a smaller number is a lot easier than, you know, it's, if you're once you're really big, you're growing by 20, 30%. It's still a big number. So for us that's basically what our planning looks like but it's really just been a mental unlock for me to realize how we should structure the budget and why it's important especially as far as overhead goes um as we're hiring people on and hey does this fit in the budget or not um does this purchase fit in and trying to keep the expenses as low as possible but at the end of the day building a budget and then making sure every month we're comparing the numbers we actually hit that month to the budget are we over why do we need to cut something or is it just a one month thing um or even for revenue hey are we over are we under you know, we should be over pretty much every month because, like I said, we're being conservative with the projections and I'm going to smash that thing out of the park. But if we don't create the revenues down, holy crap, do we need to adjust the budget cut expenses, which is the step I missed this year? Or is it okay? Is it just a one month thing? Is it a lull in the summer? Is it whatever, whatever? We, we come back from that. So that's really where I'm at right now with the budget. That's uh, what I've been working on for our 2024 planning because we're going to knock this year out of the park, fix some mistakes I made, mistakes I made this year and really just be ready to go. So 2024 is a killer year, which sets us up for an even better 2025. And then we can just start to snowball and snowball and snowball and become a big company. And someday I'll be an overnight success and full circle will also be an overnight success with me. So that'll be really fun. We're also doing sales stuff right now as always and uh, just keep it moving forward on that. So other than that, that's all I got for you guys today. Feel free to comment below with specific questions. I'm more than happy to answer about what we're doing um, and, you know, how we're going to try to keep growing. So and when I say we, I'm using the royal we, I mean me. So thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time.